Okay, so for SQL part three, we will be focusing on breaking down large queries. First day, you had some very basic, simple one-line queries. Day two, you started adding a few joins. And day three, can anyone tell me what the key difference is between the script on the left and the one on the right? Is it multiple tables or more than two tables? Yes, exactly. We are going to be selecting multiple columns from multiple tables today. So multiple columns can be selected from multiple tables simply by using commas, very straightforward. But you wanna make sure that non-aggregate columns appear in your group by statement if they also appear in the select statement. We're also going to talk a bit about diagramming and the readme should have links. I've added links to a few free diagramming applications. We could actually maybe take a look at that right now. Diagramming is a visual tool to assist with the conceptualization of your tables. And some of the tools that are free out there are DB Diagram, quick database diagrams. Not all of these use Postgres, but I believe this one does. So you could use this tool. It should be free. You don't need to sign up to diagram. Hold on, let me make sure. Actually, now that I think about it, this one might not be, quick DBD might not allow for Postgres, but this one does. This is DB diagram, don't think it's broken. I'll fix it after this presentation. So you could have it from the readme, but basically you could use this to import a Postgres SQL script. You hit submit once you've added your script and it will create a series of tables. Let me see if I could demonstrate this right now. I'm pretty sure I still have an example pulled up. Just gotta do a bit of digging. We will be continuing to work with the CARS database. So that's exactly what I'm looking for right now. Um, let's see, there it is. I'm gonna get rid of these two lines because that threw an error earlier. And I'm basically gonna take everything inside the SQL, init SQL script, and I'm gonna toss it inside of here, inside of this import. So let's, Go back here. Let's actually delete all this first. And now we can toss that in there and voila. We have our tables diagrammed for us. And this again refers to everything in the cars database that you've been working on over the past few days. So that is a tool that you could use to help break down larger queries. The other thing to keep in mind is if you break it down step by step, it will be a lot easier to break down a large query. Step one is to identify the tables that you need based on the goal. So the goal that we have as an example here is to query the total number of each make advertised in each city ordered by city. Once we've identified the tables we need, we are gonna connect the tables and then we're gonna start writing a very basic query just to be sure that we can retrieve all the data. And from there, we just review and revise until we have exactly what we need. So in our example, we are looking for makes and we are looking for cities. And if we look at the diagrams, we could see that the make is available inside the car model table and the cities are inside the user profile table. Unfortunately, 
User profile and car model tables are not directly connected. So we trace a connecting path. You can see here that an account ID is linked between user profile and app user tables. Account ID is also linked between app user and advertisement tables. Car ID is linked between advertisement and car and car model ID takes us to the car model table. Knowing that we can write a query as a starting point that will access all of these tables. So we do a uh, select all from user profile, which we give an alias of UP and we join it with the app user table with an alias of AU. We make sure we link that we identify the columns that are linked. And in this case, it's the count ID between the user profile and the app user. We then join advertisement, car, and car model in similar fashion. And finally, we limit the query by one because we're really only testing for access to the columns in these tables and not necessarily the values inside. So let's run this query. We review the results and we see that we may have too much data because we see something that looks similar to this. So now we can begin revising the query. We can start with an aggregate function like count because our goal is to return a count on each advertised make ordered by city. And with that, we get a much cleaner result. From there, we can begin adding the columns that we want from the tables that they're from, being sure again to include the columns we reference in select in our group by statement at the very bottom. And the final step will be, well, before we get there, if we forget to do this, you'll basically run into an error. Um, so always remember to include non-aggregate selections inside your group by if they're in your select. And then all that's left to do is to order by the column. In this case, we are ordering by city. So we pass it in a value of two and we want it in alphabetical order. So we pass it a value of ASC for ascending. So that's pretty much it. Um, for the rest of the day, we will be going over a SQL school challenge where you will practice uh, reviewing basic database and schema creation in Postgres, loading schemas through SQL scripts, inserting da table data through SQL scripts, and then creating, inserting, and updating and altering tables either through SQL scripts or the command line. And on uh, next four, this is this will segue you into um, SQL part four next Saturday, which is more in-depth thinking through schema design. Additionally, if you finish the challenge early, I will open up a breakout room where I will provide a coding challenge. And anyone can volunteer to do the challenge live to simulate a whiteboard coding interview. The second challenge, I will have you all pair up and it will be to solve as many of the 12 PostgreSQL exercises as possible. And as pairs, you can either work on these challenges together or you can divide and conquer. The goal is to accomplish as many as you can. At the end, when we review, everyone will share an exercise to talk through. Winners get first dibs, no repeats. Remaining turns will be in order of the number of exercises completed. And if you didn't get to solve one of the remaining exercises when it's your turn, you get to solve it live. How does that sound? Right on. That is our plan for the day. And uh, as a preview, this is going to be the optional coding challenge. It's going to be to complete an RGB function where passing in RGB decimal values will return a hexadecimal representation. Um, first come, first serve, I guess. You don't have to volunteer to do it live. So you could work on this on your own uh, once you finish the first challenge. But if anyone does want to go the extra mile, we can do it live during the inside the breakout room. So go ahead and just get started on the first challenge. 
we will then reconvene at 7.30. And actually, let me adjust this a bit. I think, I don't think you need this much time for the first part of the challenge. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tweak this a bit right now. What time is 5.45? Let's say you're starting this now. Let's open up the coding challenge at 6.30, and then we will reconvene at seven o'clock to review. This will give us more time at the very end to go over the PostgreSQL exercises. Cool, how does this sound? Any questions? Nope, all right, go ahead and get started on the first challenge. Retrieved all the information mm -hmm. uh, from the last table, CD facilities. So it's just select start, which means select all uh, from CD facilities and semicolon. Cool. That's it. Can we see it run? Yeah. Sorry. That works. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Can you scroll is, is, Oh, is, is this okay? Yeah, perfect. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> right on. All right. So that problem is out of the way. Tell me why you are up next. All right. Um, okay. Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. So um, I'll just do this one. This is where my page is on. So this is working with dates. Um, so basically we wanted us to find, get a list of members who join after a certain time. So basically just select, um, all the, the columns you wanted and all these columns are in the members, um, table. Mm -hmm. So then select those columns for members and then put the date in a string. Cause at first I didn't do it in a string and it was giving me error. So just make sure to put it in a string and run the query. And bam. Awesome. And out of the list, which one was this called? This was working with dates. Working with dates. All right. Let's cross that off the list. Cool. Great work. All right, Chris, you are up next. I think you may be muted. All right. Can you guys hear me? Yep. All right. We'll do the uh, the union. Cool. Um, so basically combine list of uh, names and all facility names. So you can do that by selecting surname from members and then use a union to select name from facilities. Can anyone, can you all see a screen? Uh, let me see. It might be me. Let me, okay. Uh, no, not really. It's pretty small. Okay, there we go. Much better. Oh. Cool. Slide. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Great work. Thanks. All right. Noel, you're up next. Um, we do this one. Oh, basic spring search. Uh, produce a list of all facilities with the word tennis in their name. So just select all from facilities where name is like and tennis with a percent sign, which means there could be things after it or not and yeah. before it. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Perfect. All right, Tyler, you are up next. And Tyler, you may be muted. 
You are correct. Um, okay. Uh, I'll do the simple aggregation one. Uh, so we're just trying to get the sign up date of the last member who signed up. So I'm going to do select max join date. It's just going to choose the highest end date. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm just picking that from CD members here. Oh, perfect. And there she is, Ryan. Right on. Great work. Ken, you are next. All right, I had to unmute myself there. Um, I kind of like this buckets one. Okay. Um, you could basically take a column and you could even perform like a math function on it or something and put all the results into a separate column that you just create, but you, you're not actually creating it on the, on the main table, but just to display the, the specific data. But um, I guess that's when you use this case and end. Mm -hmm. So the case would be like kind of like an if statement. Um, so if greater than 100, then expensive, and less than 100, then cheap. And then this, uh, I guess, is the name of the bucket. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Yeah, so that's the name of the the column right there. Awesome. Perfect. Great work. All right. Philip, you are next. Stop sharing. Uh, which one do we have? The last one? Uh, you left. Um, is this uh, more aggregation? Yes. Okay. Um, supposed to get the first and last name of the members that uh, signed up, uh, not just the date. Um, I did select first name, surname, and join date from members, and then ordered by join date descending, and then took the first one. Um, Cool. Right on. Yeah, took the first one using that limit. Awesome. Awesome. Great work. All right, Damon, you are up. Uh, okay, what do we have that's... I've not done the last three. Do we have okay. one of those that are open? There's, that still, there's still a bunch left. There's retrieve specific columns, control which rows, parts one and two, matching. Okay. Uh, let's do matching against multiple possible values. Let me share my screen. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Um, okay. So I just selected all, and then I picked this, uh, what it can call a bucket. I guess I've been calling them attributes, CD facilities, mm -hmm. uh, where this facility ID, and, and then I use this tuple to identify my numbers. And, that was, that was it. So, right cool. Yep. That's it. Great work. Right Thanks. on. All right. Jesus, you are last but not least. And looks like you are muted too. Awesome. Cool. Have we shared this one yet? Uh, we have not. All right. Cool. So, I like this one. Um, it was pretty relatively easy. I was able to work with ascending as well. Mm -hmm. That way, I was get, able to get, get it like alphabetically in order. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Cool. Right on. Um, so you're selecting a distinct surname. That way you get rid of the duplicates. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you're ordering and then you're limiting. Awesome. Okay. <clears throat> hey, I really wish we had gone with one of the more challenging tiers. Looks like <laughs> you just blew those challenges out of the waters. But uh, great work overall, everyone. Sorry about the difficulties with the first challenge, but you all toughed it out and you are all becoming SQL pros. So, this set, what was Did that? Did I miss some people? 
I don't think so. I think everyone won. I I would I just went straight down the breakout room list. Okay. I might have missed a couple. I feel like I didn't hear from a couple. Well, we could go again. There are a few more. <laughs> but no, we could also uh just uh, break early. I think you all did a great job. So you will continue doing sequel for Saturday for sure, and maybe the following week. And I will catch you next week. All right, take care, everyone. Have a good evening. Have a good one. Thanks so much.